Welcome to the neighborhood board store Steelers Extra Point, presented by BetMGM. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome inside our KDK TV studios following a lackluster loss at home by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this has become a recurring theme now, especially to teams like the Browns and the Bengals. You look back to their last nine, dating back to last year after their big start, two and seven, and two losses to the Bengals, two losses to the Browns. So when you start doing it that way, it's pretty bad. And it was a beautiful day to do anything except watch a football game, quite frankly. This was not a good game from start to finish, 24-10. Chris Hoak. Former Steeler nose tackle is here, and your job is to dig into things. So I'm going to ask you this. We talk about it the last three pregame shows we've done. Slow starts. This team has been mired in slow starts. And again today, they had in the first quarter average play 1.2 yards per play. Cincinnati 6.1. And again, they trail because of it. Yeah. Why? These are scripted plays. These are things thought out in advance of the game. Why is it happening? Well, I think there's a lot of things we're going to dig into throughout the next hour or two. But when I go and I dig into this game, we get beat in the trenches. Today, the offensive line, penalties. Early in the game, Najee Harris had an 11-yard run on that first drive, gets called back for holding. Uh, consecutive plays after play after play. What the Steelers are getting called back and they're being hampered offensively because they can't move a block up front. And then defensively, no pressure on the quarterback today, Rob. What we've been accustomed to seeing from this defensive line is not happening today. 75 consecutive games with a sack and today no sacks and really not much pressure to talk about. That's where this starts is up front. They were beat on both sides. So let's bring that up since you did. No sacks. I know you didn't have Watt, you didn't have Highsmith, uh, Ilo Alu's out for the season. However, schematically, don't you have to do something to help that team then? If you put no hits on a quarterback, if you don't put any pressure on a good quarterback, and Joe Burrow, after an interception, was terrific the rest of the game. Don't they come up with an exotic blitz? Don't they do something out of the ordinary to try to confuse a young quarterback? They can design all the exotic blitzes they want to get you man-on-man, -man, to get you one-on-one. -on -one. But you've got to win the one-on-one -on -one block, and that did not happen today. What they were doing, they were double-teaming Cam Hayward a lot of the time and letting everybody else go one-on-one, -on -one, and they weren't beating them with either their first move or their second move, and they've got to work on that. And then when they ran their games, then they when they came with the extra blitz with the backers, they were picking them up, and again, weren't beating that man-on-man -man block. That's where they've got to start. That's where they got to go back to the drawing board. And nobody realized that just T.J. Watt himself would make such a big difference on the rest of the defensive line. And all you need to do is look at this offense and their offensive line. All these guys, every single one of the starters had a penalty. And I can't remember last time I saw a game where all five starters, yeah. right across the board from Moore to Dotson to Green <laughs> to uh, Turner to Okorafor, all of them got called for a penalty. It's sloppy. It's, it's sloppy. It, you know, it puts yourself in a deficit right off the bat. It, it is so sloppy. And when you watch the film from last week against the Raiders, and then when we study the film again this week, it's not the same guy losing every single play or, or playing horrible every single play. It's one player here, one player there. It's the center, Kendrick Green. Or then it's Dotson, who really had one probably his worst game of his career today in this game with penalties, with holdings, with missed blocks, so many things. And then you talk about that the tight end position. They're, now they're not getting blocks by Fryermuth. They're not getting blocks by Eric. Ebron, where you have to win to set the edge in the run game, Bob. So when you talk about up front, every single player has got to come together and they've got to find a way to play as a unit and all play at the same time because one, one messing up here and one messing up there is not going to get it done. And Ben Roethlisberger's stats, well, if you look at him at afar after the game, you'll say, oh, not bad, 311 yards. No, this was not a good game at all by Ben Roethlisberger. One of his worst, some of his choices, some of his plays. Uh, we'll talk about that. We also have Mike Tomlin's press conference coming up. We have your calls coming up at the top of the hour on a special edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We'll do all that when we return. But the Steelers lose again. That's back-to-back -back home losses to AFC teams, one in their division. 24-10, your final score. Back with reaction from Heinz Field right after this on KDKA-TV. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store, Steelers Extra Point, presented by BetMGM. Welcome back, everyone. Bob Pompiani, Chris Hoke with you in studio. And after Cincinnati comes here and wins, and by the way, Cincinnati hadn't beaten the Steelers by more than 10 points since 1995. They did today by 14. So the Browns, they won. The Ravens were losing late to the Lions. Obviously, they've won that game. The Bengals 2-1 and one now. The Steelers find themselves 1-2 and two and facing the prospects of going on the road to Green Bay next Sunday afternoon right here on KDK. Mike Tomlin, here is the coach at the microphone. Greg, 
Okay, we're still uh, waiting for the hook up there at Heinz Field, but I'm sure one of the things he's going to talk about right off the bat is update injuries. There are a yeah. lot of them. Uh, but also, again, we start with the play of Ben Roethlisberger. Not good. Logan Wilson had two interceptions. We'll get to that in a second, but right now here is Coach Tomlin at the microphone. Right. Hey, let's not sugarcoat it, man. We played poorly today. You know, we didn't deserve to win, and that's not taking anything away from the Bengals. I'm talking about our group and, and the things that we aspire to do and how we expect to play. Um, man, we didn't play smart enough today. That was reflected in the penalty game. We didn't execute enough today, making routine plays routinely. We dropped the ball. Um, we gave up a, a deep ball in, in situational play. Um, you know, there's enough to go around, and, and we take responsibility for that. It is what it is. Um, that's what you do when you're playing losing football, and that's what we did today. And so we have to absorb that, the negativity that comes with that, the result that comes with that, and um, resolve to be better. And, and those are our intentions. That's what we just talked about in there. Um, in game, Chooks had a concussion. He's in the protocol. Um, Juju had, had a rib injury that's be continually um, being evaluated. And uh, Kendrick Green uh, had a knee. Um, I don't know the extent of, of that at this juncture. It was kind of later in the game. Um, you know, we're a one and two football team. And so, you know, we got to be better, man. We're not putting ourselves in position to win playing the way we played today. Questions? Mike, why does um, any particular reason or anything you put your finger on why the offense continues to start so slow? We're not playing well enough, you know. Um, we're not making enough plays, some of those one-on-one -on -one type plays. And obviously, you know, the initial part of this game, you saw the penalties, man. Every time we possessed the ball, man, you get a holding penalty, it's a drive killer, you know. Um, and so the penalty aspect of play did not give us a chance to, to establish any rhythm, particularly at the early portions of the game. I think every possession we had, you know, in the first quarter or so was penalty laden. Uh, right before the half, you go 15 plays, score a touchdown. They take 27 seconds. How big of a flip was that in your eyes? You know, like I mentioned in the opening, you, you can't give up deep balls or big plays, particularly in situational ball. You know, I think that's two weeks in a row, man. We had a third down and 10. We gave up a deep ball last week, a significant moment. We're in two-minute ball, and we, and we gave up another one. And so, you know, like I mentioned, man, we didn't play well enough today. Um, you can identify components of it, but it's a collective, and, and so I own that. Uh, particularly as a leader of the group. You guys weren't able to get a sack today. Was, how much was that because you're missing two outside linebackers, and how much of it was what the Bengals were doing to keep you guys from getting that Man, pressure? they were in control of the game. I mean, what are we talking about? It was 24-7, to 7, you know, for a significant portion of the game. And so when you're in that position, you're not going to expose yourself to negativity. It's situational. Yes, we had people missing, but how the game was unfolding was an element of play in that as well. Your uh, inkling at a response. Do you stay the course, stay with it, or do you think about shaking it up somehow? You know, I'm not interested in making any plans as I sit here right now, man. I'm just summarizing what transpired in the stadium. We have, you know, the, the upcoming days and hours to, to plot a course for how we move forward. How would you assess uh, Ben's play? You know, none of us played well enough, him included. None of us coached well enough, me included. You talked last week about how Ben got you were concerned that Ben was getting hit too much. A couple times today, he had plenty of time and held on and ended up taking a sack. Is that just a guy trying to force something to make something, you're hoping something, hope? You know, I don't know what specific instance you're referring to, so I'd be guessing. Um, you know, I, I know we didn't make enough plays. Do you think Ingram warranted a personal foul on that? I didn't have eyes on it. I was down the field. How much is what you were able to accomplish in the fourth quarter? was a result of the score and how they were playing and how much was maybe you guys playing better? I, I'm sure that they sat in some softer defensive structure with the game being the way it was. I was mentioning it was 24-7, to 7 and, and so you're going to get yards, but it doesn't necessarily mean points. And, and so, you know, they played a complete football game today. Um, it's not like I'm looking for comfort relative to how we finished. Uh-uh. I -uh. do expect optimism earlier about the offensive line coming together and getting better. After today, do you still see that? Certainly. You know, not reflected in today's performance, uh, but if you're asking me my level of optimism, sure, I believe in these guys. Two weeks in a row, the attention to detail, something you mentioned, what, what do you think has contributed to that? Is that inexperience or is that just? You know, um, whether it's inexperience or, or, or what have you, you know, we have to own it. And so, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time trying to analyze it or, or frame it. 
Um, I know we got to clean up our penalties. I know we got to make routine plays routinely. And those are two things that we're not doing right now. And, and you're an easy team to beat uh, when, you, when you play like that. Fourth down call coming out of the timeout. It's a dump off to, to Najee. Is that the main play call there? We had fired all our bullets at that juncture. Um, in terms of some of our play selection, man, um, you know, it just wasn't a good enough play to get in there. And they had a, obviously a picket fence, if you will, because of situations just like the conversation we were having over here. They're going to allow you to probably throw and catch the ball in front of them, but you got to do some things after that. They had a bunch of guys running along the goal line, um, like happens when it's whatever, fourth and goal from the eight or nine or whatever it was. The timeout right before the Farmers touchdown, was that something situational that you needed a timeout for, or are you just trying to give the offense more time to score there? I don't remember um, the specific instance you're talking about. I apologize. How much of this is, uh, you know, maybe Matt Canada trying to adjust the, to coaching at, at this level in terms Man, of Man, we're just not playing well enough or coaching well enough. You can frame it however the hell you want to frame it. What's your message to a lot of the young guys on the team kind of combining, you know, learning from this at the same time keeping their confidence? Like I just told them, absorb the negativity that comes with our positioning and how we performed and keep your mouth shut and resolve to do better. Um, and that's not only for them, but that's for all of us, players and coaches. Two more. Two more. All right, that's Mike Tomlin after the game. And uh, interesting note there, last week at this time he was asked about changes. He said, no, no changes. I'm going, this time not so much. He said he's going to take a couple of days and figure it out. He wasn't ready to give an answer. Do you, do you look anything into that deeper than what well, he said? Well, you have to. When you've lost two in a row, two at home, and you perform the way you performed today, you're going to have to go back and look at the film, and there may be some changes. The problem is there are so many injuries on this team right now. Do you have players that, you, that can step in and play and be better than what you have out there right now? And I don't know the answer to that right now, but I would think that you don't, Bob. Well, we talked about Ben Roethlisberger. We're going to hear from him later in the show, but I want to ask you about the two picks because this is a 14-point game. Both of them, mm-hmm. interceptions turned out to be seven points for Cincinnati, 14 total, both to Logan Wilson. The first one uh, was you know, a tip situation yeah. that he was receiving pressure and then the second one was a throw I have no idea what he was trying to do yeah first of all you know that first a hit that Ben took it was a stunt that came underneath Najee Harris came up to block on the stunt the, the end coming around and he ducked and closed his eyes and completely whiffed on that block Ben got hit as he was getting ready to throw the ball came po- poiling out and that's when the ball landed into Logan Wilson's hands. That wasn't on Ben. It just kind of spurted out like that. That second interception, Bob, that led to another touchdown that really opened this game up. I don't know what Ben was thinking. He was out of the pocket. He was scrambling, trying to force the ball to Juju. He did not see Logan Wilson at all and threw it right to him. Many might, might think that the ball was intended for Logan Wilson. Both of those interceptions led to 14 points, the difference in the game. Yeah, and the disconcerting thing, and you heard Mike Tomlin talk about it, they just put together an eight-minute drive that took like 15 plays, covered 86 yards. They tie the game 7-7, and boom, Cincinnati comes right back. And in 27 seconds, they have a touchdown, yeah. which featured uh, James Pierre getting burned there by Jamar Chase. But there was also a roughing the passer call in there, which I thought was a kind of a, a, a call that didn't need to be made. You know, Ingram comes in. He does what he has to do. It's almost like he's trying not to hit him or at least not let him hit the ground. He gets called for roughing the passer. By definition, to me, that's not roughing the passer, and it did affect how that you know drive went because they scored on what the very next play. Yeah, did you, you want, you want me to argue with you, right? But no, I, I, co- I completely agree with you on that one. Okay. I think it's a horrible call. The only thing I can think of, you had Gene Steratore who came on and he couldn't see exactly why they called that. Nothing hit hit um, Burrow's helmet. And there was no penalty there. The only thing I can think of is that he launched maybe and he left his feet. But I thought it was a horrible call. There was a makeup call on the other side when Hendrickson was called later in the game when he left and hit Ben. And I don't think he had his right arm kind of yeah, on but the top he hit him of his in the helmet. Head. That's not a makeup. It was call. it was kind of like it, it was like a feather fall on his helmet really I, mean, I thought it was a makeup call in my opinion but really that call that we're talking about that led to two more plays in that big pass right right the 34 yard pass to jamar chase i mean he's an exceptional talent for him to separate like that the last second from james pierre is special and what a great throw and catch yeah and, and ben roethlisberger had a chance on separation to james washington late in the game that could have been an automatic six points and he overthrew yeah. him on the one play remember that one so yeah. we'll talk more about that ben is coming up at the podium we'll have more reaction from heinz field following a disappointing loss to the Bengals. That's now two and seven in their last nine for the Steelers after that remarkable start last year. They got to get it figured out next week. It's a trip to Green Bay 24-10, your final score on what looked like a beautiful day for football, but didn't turn out the way people wanted. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store, Steelers Extra Point, presented by BetMGM. We are back. Bob Pompiani, Chris Oak with you following a 24-10. Bengals win on the road. The Steelers are 0-2 at home and a schedule that gets tougher as the weeks go by. Injuries piling up. Officially today, Chooks Okorafor is in the protocol. Juju Smith-Schuster had rib injury and Kendra Green was on his back for a while. I'm not sure what he had, a knee apparently, but we don't know the scope of that one. So now Ben Roethlisberger's day. Again, at the end of the day, we talk about this all the time. 58 yeah. passes is too many passes. Too much, too much it is for any quarterback. Now he's coming off a peck injury. I don't know what that played a role in or not, but he was very erratic today. And I think that was very evident right from the get-go. Yeah, to be fair to Ben, there were a lot of drop balls as right. well, but some of those drop balls were behind pl players, were in the dirt. And so you look at Ben right now, it just seemed to me like he was out of sync all game. Was it because he didn't practice all week and uh, just wasn't sharp? I don't know. He would have been hit so many times in this game. He was under pressure. We know now that later in Ben's career, he does not like to get hit. So he wants to get rid of that ball as quickly as possible. That's why you're seeing so many dink and dunks Quick ball. I mean, today, Najee Harris touched the ball 28 times. He had 14 catches for 102 yards. That's because Ben's trying to get the ball out quick. He does not want to get hit. So that leads to some of this erra these erratic throws because he's trying to just you know, throw the ball out and get rid of it so he doesn't get hit. Yeah, but in the past, he would escape some of that and then create yeah. what he used to create down the field. So Ben Roethlisberger is now at the podium at Hinesville. Let's hear what he had to say after a disappointing loss. I don't think so. I wish there was. No, if we, if we had the answers, I'd, we'd do everything we could to fix it. Um, but right now, we're just, I think it's lack of execution for whatever reason. How much of their penalties hurting you, especially the offensive line holdings and false starts? Well, yeah, penalties kill you. Um, you know, there were some drive killers in there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's huge. Can't have them. Ben, you guys moved pretty consistently between the 20s and the fourth quarter. Was that reflective of the score and how they were playing you, or did you find a little something as the game went on? Probably a little bit of both. Um, you know, just um, you know, they're they're sitting back trying to prevent the big play. Uh, we got a couple of decent chunks in there, but um, you know, just kind of. So we got we got. I mean, we, at that point, you got to go throw the ball every play, pretty much. So um, got to make some plays, and, and guys made plays when we had to, but but I and we didn't make enough. What was the fourth down play? Uh, was that the call? The little swing pass to Najee down there? In the yeah, they had a, they have a type of defense. We called it a picket fence. I don't know what you're going to call where they just sit back and um, you know we, we anticipated that. that's what they showed, and so we we're going to try and get it to him to let them let get guys out in front to block for him and see what we could do. Uh, you're a little limited from that far out uh, on what you can do, except maybe throw a ball up or you know, and you know, hindsight, we wish we would have you know maybe take a shot in the end zone. I wish I would have done that. Yeah, your second interception. What did what did you see? Like throwing across the middle. Yeah, I didn't see. I I thought he was going the other direction. Saw Juju. Um, the the defender was kind of moving to his right, my left, and you know, it was just awful play by me. Tech injury was really painful. How, how was it during the game, and how do you feel now? Everything hurts. Yeah, first interception, you get your arm hit. Um, did that affect you the rest of the game, or is that just something that you should No, you, you hate those kind of turnovers. The ball just you get hit, and the ball pops up in the air. Chase is open, going to be open on the sideline, and guy made a great play. Unfortunately, not bad for us. Ben, I think it's already ten sacks through three games that you've absorbed. I think it was fourteen all of last year. Is how much of that is what, what's happening in front of you, and how much of that is you just figuring out? You know. Have, when you're making your progressions, maybe not get through the ball in time, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there were coverage sacks today. There was, I mean, you drop back and throw it 50 sometimes. I don't know how many we threw it tied today. Um, those are going to happen. I thought the guys put forth some good effort today. Um, you know, it's it's not easy when you're blocking the group that, that put a lot of money to their D-line. Uh, we knew coming in that that's a good group. And, um, you know, it's not on the guys up front by any means. And attention to Najee today, especially with the passing game. A lot of what they were doing, taking uh, yeah, taking away a lot of the deep stuff, and and so he's he's going to be open underneath. And um, you know, I thought he did. I thought he did well. Um, he's learning. Um, he's understanding. I don't. I don't remember watching a lot of his college tape to, to know how much they asked him to catch out of the backfield. I don't believe it was a lot, but um, so it's you know he's learning and growing on the urgency out of the backfield and, and how fast the ball can get to him, and then how fast they can close on him when he gets the ball. How do you lead your group coming out of this? Pats on the back or kicks in the backside? Yes, both. Uh, but it's, but it's got to start with me. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna point the fingers at anybody else. It's got to I'll point the thumb at myself and um, try and get it figured out. I'm, I'm 
I'm a little stumped by it. I'm a little I'm frustrated. I'm hurt. I hate losing. I'm never going to quit and give up. And, you know, I think it's just um, it's frustrating because I know the, the the work that we all put in and myself and the other guys and Coach Canada and the other coaches um, we're busting our butt. We're having great days of practice. We're having great walkthroughs, good meetings. So I uh, just hope at some point it, you know, it clicks for us. And you... That's going to have to start very quickly on the road to Green Bay. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers and company seem to get their mojo back. So he said something about Cincinnati taking away the deep ball. If yeah. you know that, again, I, I, I'm, I, you know how I feel. I feel like the run game has to be for young offensive linemen. That's the best way to get them engaged. Najee showed me some really talented yeah. runs today. And he did last week as well. Why not just do that more early in games? If you look at the past uh, run breakdown, it was not – even when the game was scoreless or tied at 7-7, it's still pass-heavy. It is pass-heavy throughout this whole game, Bob. And what I saw there from Ben, it's what you don't see very often. Ben does take the blame for losses. He does take the, uh, the blame for bad plays. But in there, you saw vulnerability with Ben. You saw real frustration. And he said, I'm stumped right now. And Ben's been playing this game. He's 39 years old for a long time. And for him to be stumped and frustrated like this, it, it's real. And they're feeling it in that locker room. And he's feeling it um, between his ears right now. And, and for Ben to go out there and he's preparing, they're working hard, and things just aren't clicking because one play you're not getting block, blocks up front, and the next play you're having a miss, uh, a drop ball, and the next play you're you're overthrowing somebody. It's just one thing after another. It's not clicking for all the hard work they're putting in. Some of that's injuries, but some of that is just that it's it's bad luck. And other teams understand what the Steelers are trying to run. We, you've said this many times on Twitter. You tweet it and talk about it. The Steelers' offense hasn't changed much, right? right? Maybe they have the window dressing where they're putting guys in motion. They come out some different things. But really, the routes are the same. Their idea of getting guys open deep is trying to send Chase Claypool deep and outrun somebody, right. right? Run James Washington. Have him outrun somebody. There's no creativity in terms, my opinion. Now, I'm a defensive lineman. But in my opinion, <laughs> there's no creativity. Instead of rub routes, you had one thing we didn't see last week we talked about. Quick slant to Chase Claypool early. He dropped that ball. He should have caught it. And you hope he beats that guy, breaks that tackle. He can go for 15, 20 yards. But there's not a lot of creativity with these pass routes. And that's why you're seeing these teams just sit deep and make them check the ball down and break on those, those little dumps and tackle. And they're not giving up big plays. We'll talk more about some of the schematic choices in this game when we come back. We have more interviews from the locker room. And then soon you'll have an opportunity to air your opinions right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call Special Steelers Edition. For now, Steelers are 1-2, and two, battered and bruised as they go to the road now to take on Green Bay. 24-10 year final. We continue right here on the Extra Point, Pittsburgh's KDKA-TV. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store, Steelers Extra Point, presented by BetMGM. Continue our post-game breakdown of a Steelers loss, 24 to 10. It's now time for the JP Roofing final stats. And the one that jumps out to me, I'm going to harp on this. I'm sorry, Chris. I do it every week. You see, Cincinnati made a concerted effort to run the ball with Joe Mixon. That's why he's the leading rusher in the NFL after three weeks, or at least up at the top. 24 of those compared to 18 passes. Look at the Steelers. Yeah, and listen, people want to say, well, the Steelers were behind. They weren't behind a lot of the game, especially early. They were still throwing the ball more than they ran the ball. 58 throws to 15 um, runs. And that, that, that ratio is not going to work. That's not the Steeler recipe for victory. And, and we, they can't keep that up. They've got to give the ball to Najee. We saw today how gifted and blessed Najee is and how talented he is. He was able to make guys miss. He was able to move the chains with his legs. Give him the ball, but let him run the ball and let him run downhill. And, and not, not a lot of stuff that's going outside because I feel like the most success he had was when he ran between the tackles with quick hit and plays. And, uh, and he was able to get to that second level quickly and make those lines linebackers and DBs miss. Plus, if teams are taking the deep ball away, that's the way they make them think yeah. and rethink what they're doing. Plus, the Steelers do not use the middle of the field as much as I would like, personally. I don't know how you feel. I'll get your take on that in a minute. But right now, Cam Hayward, who continues to play very well, he is at the podium at Heinz Field. I don't know what the mood is right now. Um, just, you know, we suck today. <laughs> um, you know, things did not look well and didn't play in our favor. Um, you know, our level of execution was not at, uh, at high. Um, you know, whether it's missing the tackle in the red zone when we should have just gave up three uh, to a two-minute drive, we got to get off the field. 
um, starts with a penalty, then ends with a touchdown. Um, as a defense, that's unacceptable. Um, it was less than two minutes. Um, then going to the half, uh, we didn't take the field and get off the field. Um, and when you have that, uh, that's a recipe for a disaster. Um, defense, uh, we did not play well. Um, hopefully, it's the worst one of the year. What do you do with that, though, Camp? What do you do with that sort of course of the week? Do you look at it almost? You, know, you better look at it. Uh, you know, more teams are going to try it. Um, you know, uh, if we want to be a success, successful defense, um, we got to get off the field, uh, can't uh, have penalties, um, can't give up big plays. Um, and, you know, for our younger guys uh, and just for our team in general, uh, this is what not to do. That's Cam Hayward, a leader of this defense, uh, not happy at all. Nobody's happy over there today, and they shouldn't be after this game. You saw that touchdown pass to Tyler Boyd. It featured Melvin Ingram having a chance to make a play there, and then Devin Bush looked like he was just running off the field. I don't know what he was doing there. I know he's back from injury. He and Hayden both were not good yeah. today. Maybe the injury impacted them, but what about that play? That was an interesting play, right? And that's a time as a defense where you want to step up. That sudden change where you throw an interception, a defense hold them to a field goal because they're already in field goal range. And then they dump that ball down over the middle to Tyler Boyd. And I don't know if Malcolm, e Malcolm Ingram wasn't ready for him. He he's completely bumped off Malcolm Ingram and went the opposite direction for a touchdown. And it seemed to me, like you said, Bob, Devin Bush and Joe Hayden coming off those groin injuries, they just both looked like they were one step behind today. You saw that each time that they went to, to Joe Hayden's side, that Joe Hayden seemed like he just wasn't quite there on that touchdown pass on that deep cross to, um, to Jamar Chase. He was a couple steps behind him. And so there were some of their, their, their defensive players that they count on to excel that just weren't at their best today. And that was one of the things that they struggled with defensively. Absolutely. All right, a man who did make a pick today and we thought maybe it might change the uh, emotion uh, of this game was Terrell Edmonds, and he right now is speaking at Heinz Field. And we just have to uh, come out and practice harder. Uh, we just got to figure out what drives us as a team and come out together and stay together as a team and come out and just practice harder next week and let's go get this win because we all know what we're capable of. Uh, they just came out. They played a hard game tonight. Uh, they were the better team tonight, but we're going to come out next week and we got to show them what Stiddles football is all about. Cam said that he wasn't sure what the mood was in the locker room right now. From your perspective, what is kind of the feeling, especially especially among the defense after today's game? Man, we didn't play that well. We didn't play that well as a defense. We didn't play to our capabilities, and we know that we can be better. So everyone is like, what are we doing wrong? And that again, that's why I'm saying it goes back to practice. We just have to come out and practice and play lights out and practice. Um, no just overthrows on balls or anything. We just got to go hard 24-7 and get better. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the breakdown of everything. We just have to get better because tonight's not acceptable at all. Along those lines, how do you guys kind of keep your confidence in yourself and kind of make sure the young guys still have that after a loss like that? Uh, it really goes back to the leaders. Uh, we have some great leaders on our team and they're not going to let us slap. They're not going to let us um, take our foot off the gas, you can say, because we have to come out next week because we have to turn the page from this game. We're going to watch it tomorrow make our corrections, but we have to turn the page and be ready for Green Bay this coming up week. Well, is there frustration with the defense or the struggles by your offense? No frustration because even when if they're struggling, we have to help them, and if we're struggling, they have to help us. Uh, it plays hand-to-hand, -hand, and we know um, going into a game, everyone knows that uh, because we have to just help each other out the best way we can because we go like yin and yang. We have to go out there and help each other out, so that's our whole mindset on it. So regardless of where we get the ball or where we place, we had to hold them to a three and out or a field goal or anything, regardless of sudden change. Well, Edmonds with an interception today didn't result in anything. And I want to get your take on overall the defensive back play so far that we've seen specifically today. Well, I think the two things stand out to me. The last two weeks, they had the 61-yard touchdown pass given up to Henry Ruggs last week, and today the 34-yard touchdown pass uh, to Jamar Chase. James Pierre, that we talked about this, last second he was able to separate from James Pierre, and that's something we're not accustomed to seeing from the defensive backfield of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They do not want to give up that deep pass. They want to keep everything in front of them and be able to tackle the catch, break it on it. And so that's something that concerns Coach Tomlin. But when you look at it, there's nothing to stand out to me that they're, they're playing off. Awful. They're not playing really well. It's just, again, one play here, one play there, like we're seeing in the run game with the, with the lack of their ability to run the ball. People making mistakes that, that 
that allows the opponent to convert on third downs to make the big play they need to make. And so they got to come together as a team, and they've got to be able to put consistent plays together, play after play, series after series, game after game, or this is going to be a lot of the same throughout the season. Zach Taylor, the head coach of Cincinnati, this was only his second road win since he took over that franchise. Yeah. So uh, they're certainly getting better, but we'll talk more about you know, some of the run plays they were successful at with an offensive line that, quite frankly, is not as good as it should have been over the last couple of uh, games. But it was good today, better than it was. We'll talk about that and more when we continue right here on our post-game analysis of a Steelers loss to Cincinnati 24-10. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store, Steelers Extra Point, presented by BetMGM. All right, if you're looking for a bright spot, it would be Pat Fryermuth, who came up with his first touchdown in the NFL. Roethlisberger put it out there for him. That completed a 15-play, 86-yard drive. It took over eight minutes to do. He got in. He later had a drop, which is a rarity for him because he normally handles everything his way. But that touchdown was his first. It was Ben Roethlisberger's third, 399th of his career. And Fryermuth... Talked about it after the game. I mean, obviously 10 points isn't enough to win an NFL game. Uh, we know that. Um, we're going to have to get, come in tomorrow, watch the film, and see what we can execute better. Um, all comes down to execution. Um, so, you know, looking at what we can improve on. Um, we're just going into practice this week. Um, looking forward to Green Bay and um, see what we can correct. There was a sense and a lot of discussion over the week that when it came to blocking, that there was just maybe one thing being missed or whatever. Not to try to find a positive in something like this, but was, was any of that happening? More clipping the run blocking? Um, I mean, I think early on in the first half, I think it was, you know, we obviously weren't kind of running the ball the way we wanted to. Um, but I think, um, you know, in the second half, I think we ran the ball in that drive. Um, going into the halftime, I think we moved the ball pretty well. I mean, I think we had some pretty long drives. Um, that we were able to run the ball on. Um, we just kill ourselves with penalties and stuff like that. I mean, I think Nash had like three runs of 10 plus that got called back because of a holding call. Um, and that's just attention to detail. So I mean, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. Um, so we just got to, you know, look at those mistakes and try and get better. How do you guys kind of keep confidence, obviously, moving forward after a day of play? Is there a message from the veterans in the group to you guys to kind of maintain that confidence? Yeah, I mean, I think. You know, the confidence just comes from, you know, we have all the talent in the world on offense um, and especially defense as well. So um, we just got to continue to, you know, be confident in ourselves, not get down on each other and not break away as a team. Um, you know, we got to come together and, you know, build each other up because when I mean, we've got a lot of talent um, at receiver and, and tight end and O line and quarterback and, and, and so forth. So we just got to continue to, um, you know, stick together and, and just find ways to exploit the defense and, you know, make explosive plays. Hi, right, this is Pat Frymuth. First National Football League touchdown. It came at a time where it tied the game up at 7-7. Seven to seven. But I do want to talk about the middle of the field because he can occupy that space. They have bigger guys there. And I think, for example, you saw third and eight early in the game. What do they do? The Steelers go down the sideline 30 yards. They didn't need 30. They needed nine. And then you had a shorter one, which was or a bigger one, third and 23, and they dump it off on a wide receiver <laughs> screen with no chance of getting the yardage. Were you surprised by those selections? <laughs> it's a little frustrating, right, because you saw that. When it's third and long, long, we're not talking talking third and eight, we're talking 23 plus, that Steelers just do a little check down, right? And you know they're not going to get the first down. Or when it's third and medium, five, six, seven, eight yards, now they're throwing the ball deep on just little go routes. And they've got to find a way to get the ball just beyond the chains. And they're not doing that right now. And I'd like to see them go more to pat over the middle, just like you said, Bob, and running them down the seam and try to stretch that field a little bit in the middle. It can open things up on the outside. Um, he came here as a pass catching tight end. And so I like what he's doing. they got to get the ball to him more where I'd like to see him improve and where we're kind of shining a light on him right now he's got to get better in the run game if you go back and watch the film right. he's not getting it done on the edge there Ebron's not getting it done that's why this part of the running game is hurting to some degree is because when you want to run the football you got to have tight ends that can block so if that's where he that's where he needs to improve if I want to especially if some of those out. young guys on the offensive line yeah. are not getting it done by themselves they're going to need help so that's all part of it meantime Najee Harris a very active day especially in the pass catching department he's at the podium right now following a Steelers loss the the game plan was to win ultimately um how we did it what uh was a I, I wouldn't say it was just to give me the ball. Um, it just so happened I caught a lot of checkdowns. That's really what it was. <clears throat> it wasn't like no design pass for me, it was just checkdowns, you know. 
you talked earlier in the week about having patience as you transition to the NFL. Do you feel that your patience was better today that led to some of the longer runs and what you were able to do with the Some of what? Your patience. Was, do you feel that your patience as you developed, you talked about earlier in the week, just being patient and developing in the NFL, do you feel you were better today with that and just, just how you were able to get down the field? Running-wise? Like run? run running, yeah. Um, I mean, I, it, uh, I don't know, man. There's a lot that I need to work on, I guess. Um, I could do better, though. <clears throat> Any more questions? Now, does it help you feel more settled, maybe, when you're so involved early? Does it help you get into the flow of the game faster when there is a conscious effort to get you the ball or, or even just their check downs that are making you involved in the offense? Does it make me feel comfortable? Does it get settled into the flow of the game faster? I mean, I'm already settled in. Um, I really don't know how to answer that question. I'm already settled in, though. It's, you know, giving me the ball early on, I guess it helps me with the, see how the defense is playing. But <clears throat> to answer your question, I'm already settled in. <clears throat> Najee, have you ever lost two games in a row in your life before? Last time I lost two games in a row? I mean, have you ever, do you think? Was my senior year of uh, high school. Give any sort of advice, like yeah. how? Yeah, a lot of guys did. Um, a couple guys came to me and said, "This isn't like uh, this isn't college. You know, every week you're playing somebody good. Every week, uh, <clears throat> every you're not going to win every game, especially out, out in the NFL where you're playing good teams every every week. So, um, really, just keeping the level headed and not really like losing focus of the, the ultimate goal is what they were telling me to sum it all up. <clears throat> Numerous guys told me that, but yeah, that. Um, you know, it's obviously not good to lose, especially two games back to back. But we're just still trying to find the rhythm of a team and offense wise too. It's a lot of young guys, a lot of guys have to step up. So, you know, it just takes time. Good question by Brooke Pryor of ESPN there. Have you ever lost two in a row? Because it, it, it didn't happen in Alabama, you know that. No, absolutely not. I mean, they're winning every, every single week, primarily when he was there. And he was a big part of it. And it's frustrating when you come to a team like him, first-round draft pick, you're thinking, I'm going team, we're going to win. We're going to go to the playoffs. We have a chance to win the Super Bowl. And you come here now and you start off one and two your rookie year. That's something he's going to have to deal with. And, and this is a guy that I believe, great character, great work ethic. He, he'll, he'll rise up and help this team get the win, hopefully, next week against the Packers. All right, I want to talk about the fourth and ten play in which it was a check down to him. And he said most of those were check downs. You know, they're at the 11-yard line. Yeah. You need to get the sticks. Yeah, this is your last chance, essentially. And yet, Ben described it as a picket fence. Did you see a picket fence? Well, I, listen, I, I don't know what Ben describes as a picket fence, but what we saw and what Trent Green pointed out on the broadcast was that they, we called it sugar when I was a defensive player, they were, they were faking the blitz. And then at the snap, the linebackers backed out. And so I believe that Ben thought the blitz was coming, and when the blitz comes, you get it out hot. And so that was a hot pass, I believe, getting it out to Najee, hoping that they'd catch him in that blitz and he'd be able to get, make a guy miss and get 10 yards. Um, and so that's what happened to me there. I'd like to see in that situation, you got Chase Claypool, who, what, 6'4", 6'5". You got uh, Fryermuth, who's 6'6". Try to get the ball to those guys in the red zone. That's when they're at their best, going against usually a, a DB or a linebacker that's smaller than them, but we're just not seeing the ball go to them in the situations. Uh, the Steelers were one for three in the red zone today, and that, that was really one of the demises, too, of this team was they could not convert in the red zone. No, and you got to do that, especially uh, in these division games where it's tight. And quite frankly, they didn't get it done today. They're going to get another shot next week. It's a 425 kickoff. You have it right here on KDK as they make a trip to Lambeau Field to take on Green Bay. And, uh, you know, you don't want to fall to one and three. That's for sure. After going to one and two following this loss, back-to-back -back home losses here for the Steelers. 24-10, your final score. We're back with more right after this on KDK TV. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store, Steelers Extra Point, presented by BetMGM. Bob Pompiani and Chris Oak back in studio with you as the Steelers now look at the road ahead, presented by your Neighborhood Ford Store. And it's next Sunday, 425 at Green Bay. Again, that game here. And then after that, a couple of more home games. And they really need, these are all AFC, well, not Seattle, but... Uh, Denver is an AFC game that they're going to need to win if they have hopes of just getting into this uh, you know, tournament at the end of the year. So the Broncos are playing well. 
Seattle's always been a bugaboo. How do you look at those? <laughs> Things are not getting easier for the Steelers right here. You're going to, to Green Bay, and last week they really responded and beat, beat up on the Detroit Lions. Mm -hmm. They play tonight, so we'll see. They play tonight against the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. So we'll see how they do, how they respond after a big win against the Lions. But it doesn't look like it's getting any Steelers for the, any easier for the Steeler team. Let's talk about Joe Burrow real quick. I, I think he made a tremendous, uh, you know, rebound after his interception uh it was a pass that uh, Edmonds made and after that he went 14 for 17 for 172 yards and three touchdown passes yeah. including that 34 yarder but he looked very poised but again the key is in the first two games Chris he had been sacked nine times today the Steelers only got one just one pressure no sacks nothing they gave him time to operate they gave him a lot of time and listen like you said he was 14 for 17 and, and he made the throws that he needed to make think about this how he responded the Steelers went down and scored we thinking with what a minute four left in the first half and tying the game up seven to seven he comes out and in three plays three real plays he moves the ball down the field goes 75 yards makes that 34 yard strike Beautiful throw to Jamar Chase. To me, that was the play of the game because that really started the momentum going in the direction of the Cincinnati Bengals. And, and again, like I said, there was one time in the game where it was, I think, second and eight, third and eight, and he called off the, the pass play and took, put the ball down because he saw a man and scrambled for the first down. This is a guy that got it and responded after last week, Bob. Three interceptions on three consecutive plays last week, and the way to respond, come out and throw three touchdown passes against the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, let's take a look at some of the other uh, games of interest today around the NFL. Cleveland, slow start, but they came on and won 26-6, so they're two and one. So is Baltimore, and they needed a 66-yard field goal by Justin Tucker. It's an NFL record, of course. 1917, and you saw the end of this one, the wow. Chargers yep. took advantage of Kansas City turnovers, and Kansas City now has lost two games in a row, yep. and nobody saw them going one and two, regardless of who they played. We're really seeing a rivalry start there in that AFC division, and you think about a 66-yard field goal to win in Detroit. I mean, the Ravens were down, they were. and they had to battle back. Who would have thought that the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> would have started out one and two? If you would have told me that a month ago, I would have thought you were crazy. One thing before we go, and that is something, again, bugaboo to me, first First and goal from the threes, 24 to 7. Now the Steelers need points, and you thought a touchdown there makes it a 10 point. It's still going to be two possessions no matter what you do. But they go empty backfield on first and goal, and then they end up with an offensive pass interference, a sack, and then a false start. All of a sudden, 22 yards backwards, they had to settle for three. Why? Why? <laughs> Penalties no? are killer. Yeah, but why, why empty backfield? People want to see that stuff. People want to see Matt Canada offense, kind of the, the trickery and the creativity, and now you don't want it, Bob. I mean, what do you, what do you, want? Do you want, want? Do you want those I, kind why, of things? Why is Najee, Najee Harris a run game? You Bob, have a, last week you oh, wanted more of that. This no, week I now didn't. you want them back in the shotgun want, with the side No, car. I didn't say that. I said in that position, first and goal from the three, why is it nobody in the backfield? Because the running game was inconsistent. They were, they were getting and the yards sometimes. the passing game wasn't? But, no, it was very inconsistent, but that's what they go to so, when they struggle. The empty backfield, I thought it was a great play call. It was OPI very questionable when Chase came down and hit, no, hit the DB. He it, it, was, it was like it, a block. It, it, but it was, I, again, to me as a defensive guy, right, <laughs> when you kind of just lean on someone or set a screen like in basketball, to me it's very questionable. But then what was a killer was the next sack that right. Dan Moore Jr. gave up to Hendrickson. Hendrickson. And then the next thing was a false start that you saw Dan Moore spiral and let the snowball get bigger on that drive. And next thing, it moved them way back. They couldn't overcome that and had to kick a field goal mm. instead of being close to get a touchdown and be within 10 points. Well, I'm just saying that's just, you know, this is why we have shows. We debate these kind of things. I would have just liked yeah. a power run game at that point <laughs> and try to get I some points that, that way. Because you end up putting, you know, you're back 22 yards. You have no choice at that point. All right. We are going to uh, wrap up the show, and when we come back, we're going to turn it over to you. I'm sure a lot of you out there have some hot takes about the Steelers and where they are after this game, 24-10, your final score. Chris and I will take a break. We'll come back, and you will have a chance on a special Steelers edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, a show we normally do every night at 10.35. We're going to do it right here, right now, live on KDKA.